Yep. How you doing? She did it. Yeah. I just want to clap. I feel real happy. We're back for another episode. Back for another. We got some good episode. ones. We got some good ones ahead of us today. We're going to talk about two of the biggest setbacks we see when a business or group comes to us to help them fix a campaign that just didn't get off the launch pad. Okay. Right. Yeah. So there, there's two that I've kind of gone back over the last decade in my head and looked at what's the common thread when a group comes to us in shambles or the brand's not where they want it to be or um, or it just didn't develop out the way they thought it would. They come to us to either fix it in a hurry or to just start rebuilding all over again or to kind of do a post-mortem as to, well, why did this happen? Okay, yeah. so the two things, and you tell me if you think I'm wrong, but the two things that I've pinpointed is they're either A, the group developed the campaign based on their own individual opinions, right? Mm-hmm their own subjective ideas, or B, somewhere along the line, they developed analysis paralysis, and they started to overanalyze every step, what foot comes first, what, what mediums do we use to launch this thing. So, yeah. so again, A, too opinionated, developed based on their own subjective ideas, and B, they had analysis paralysis, just didn't know how to begin and execute. Do you yeah. think those are? Yeah, I think that's accurate. I think that's that probably covers a majority of clients that we, we you know we come across, especially ones that are having some trouble. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. The the ones where they're not, they're just kind of creating based on their own opinion, and that that's kind of a given. You have clients that come in, and sometimes we even do that. We ask them their opinion, and I think it's. They need to look at it from the they perspective. Become, yeah. They they need to come at look at it from the perspective of the demographic they're trying to reach. And you kind of forget that. That kind of goes out the window sometimes when you're creating it's your brand. So, you know, you you start you're thinking emotionally about involved, you're yeah. emotionally involved. So what about um, one of the things we do to get around that in house here when we work with a group like that is we mm-hmm. do it it's been done for a long time. There's a reason because it's effective. We always start with a customer persona and we develop it with the creative team and the client in the room with us. So every step of the way we have this persona to remind us this is who we're targeting. Yeah. These are the feelings and emotions and sentiment and um, actionable items that have to resonate with this Definitely. person, not Steve Bond, Steve Ryan, Bart Merlin, whoever, as well as the client, enter yeah. client's name. Um, yeah. and, and that's been a great tool. Mm-hmm. And we've even pulled it back out throughout processes to say, you know, got to remember, it might resonate with you, but we're not trying to sell to you. Especially with a product-based yeah. company, you know, someone that's definitely has a demo- demographic they're trying to sell something to or have yeah. a product that's geared towards a certain group of people. You know, now, now, def- now, the ones that have been successful, they always come to us knowing that persona. Oh, yeah. That- now, there, and there have been times where they think they know it, and then we do a little bit of a, a dig, and we say, well... You got part of it, but it's not all there. Yeah. And I think that's where we come in. We can, we definitely do help. We help them realize that, you know, make sure you know your demographic because if you don't, we might need to take a step back and say, okay, before we jump into creative, let's start to analyze what your demographic actually yeah. is because the last thing we want to do is go through this big creative process and have to take a step <laughs> backwards and like doesn't this doesn't mean a this, damn to the people who are actually trying to get in. Yeah. And and so that's the I mean that to me is the first that really it's the first step in any brand campaign is to identify the point, the audience, and then the method of distribution. Yeah. That's a fancy way of saying know who the hell you're trying to reach and and develop in their vein, not yours, right? Yeah. The second one is the analysis paralysis portion where the process has been so hyped and there's so much energy and there's so many ideas. Just so, like we had talked about, you have a big group, everyone's got an idea, they're throwing in, they're throwing in, they're throwing in, oh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. Yep. And then when it comes time to execute, you like crumble because the expectation is based on multiple people's energies and not yep. a narrow, here's the objective, here's the action items, and here's the carry out plan. Definitely. Right? Yeah, I think- How do you it, get around that? How do you get around well, some some, organizations not being able to take another step because they're so mired in the ideation part of it. I think I think it's really tough. I mean, even as creatives ourselves, we've been in situations where you have multiple people bringing creative ideas to a table 
And early you, on, this team did you, that. You I have mean, to. You have to understand. Years ago, yeah. yeah you have to you understand. Learn. You don't. You don't want to cut somebody's idea off because it doesn't match with yours. You want to probably take the positives of your idea and add them to a list. Yeah. And then kind of move through that way. But you can easily get into a situation where multiple people are like, "Well, this is my idea. I think it's great." And yours conflicts with mine. So then there's that. You're kind of buttoned up against each other. And you don't see any movement yeah. where if you kind of come together and say, well, here's my idea. Let's let's write this idea down. Let's get ideas from everybody else and then see where we can move to make everybody happy. At once. Well, and here comes a plug, a shameless one. Yeah. If you click walk over to the blog, we actually talk about the kind of the four ground rules we set mm-hmm. to, to avoid that. It, and sometimes it's inevitable because you every group has different personality types, different dynamics. Yeah. And there's a whole nother podcast there that we could do, but at least establishing some ground rules from the outset and keeping those as well in front of you mm-hmm. to remind everyone the end goal. And yeah. you know, w- the vision is bigger than one individual. Definitely. And it's also bigger than one individual's resentment, fears, excitement, because those are usually, this all tra- traces back to emotion in the creative space. Mm-hmm. And when it becomes charged with emotion, the chances for analysis paralysis go up. Yeah because it's no longer a campaign it's someone's ego and reputation involved definitely so, uh it's yeah it's just you it's gotta good. do it psychoanalyze it's, each person in your group definitely yeah you make know. them cry and uh get a psychiatrist on staff just get raw into the core and then yeah. once they're torn down like bionic man you build them back up there you yeah. go no don't do that yeah you um, should do that <laughs> just kidding yeah those yeah. are good man i think definitely. those are the two and to respect those, those uh, are big sticking points definitely. yeah to respect the ground rules Definitely. All right, man. All right. Well, this that's another one good. of the books. That's a good one. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. And I'm, I'm sure everyone will agree. Keep following us. Definitely. See you next time. We done. We done. Nervous, awkward, and sitting. I'm sweating. Okay, so.